Well, hello, and welcome to the CAD tutorial channel. Today we're going to work on a basically a flow analysis or flow simulation in SolidWorks. We're going to be using a vertical wind turbine uh, to accomplish this, and we'll be building a wind tunnel uh, to do our testing in. This wind tunnel that we're going to be making, we could use on any uh, model out there. We just have to place the assembly inside the tunnel and we can be testing our models for how wind will flow over them uh, virtually rather than having a real life physical wind tunnel for those effects. This is fairly easy to do. We will need uh, SolidWorks flow simulation for us to accomplish it. And uh, I'll walk you through that here as quick and painless as I possibly can. All right, so here's our wind turbine uh, vertical format for it. It is a assembly model that I've locked in place so nothing can move at this point. So all of its degrees of freedom are uh, locked out because we'll be testing this model statically rather than as it is flowing and, and functioning as we intend it to. So our orientation is important. Where we want the blades to be, we'll just have to do multiple tests and change where the blade positions are uh, with our wind coming over that to see how those changes affect uh, our airflow. All right, so step one is we're going to start a new part file. And this part file is going to be to make the tunnel itself. So I'm just going to create a sketch. We'll do it on the right plane. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And we're going to apply some dimensions. We'll go 20 inches. It's got to be larger than our assembly model that we have. So 20 by 20 should do it for me. I'm then going to extrude that out. And I'm going to make it 36 inches long. And I'll do it from the mid plane, although it really doesn't matter. Okay. This way, I'm going to put the model in the middle. I have a starting point for the air to flow and then an ending point for the air to come over the model and be collected. So the longer, the better uh, to give us better results. Okay. So here's our model. doesn't matter what material it is, just a box. We're going to go ahead and shell that out, and I'm going to knock a hole on each end of it. And I don't really care what the thickness of the shell is, just that I have basically a rectangle that passes all the way through. We'll go ahead and save that part off. And we'll head back over to our assembly model and we'll place that component in. Okay, model's in. I'm going to make that bottom face to the bottom of my wind turbine. And then I can get really precise with this, but for today's purposes, I'm just going to kind of center it in there. That looks good. All right, that's all the modeling we need. All the hard work was making the model itself, but the testing is fairly easy. Okay, so once we have this, we need to save off our assembly. And we'll save it as, uh, that'll be fine. And one last step is I'm going to fix my tunnel. So now nothing will move. Okay. Now we're ready to go over to the flow simulator. <clears throat> and we're going to use the wizard for this. We can name our project anything we want. We'll just call it wind tunnel. We use the defaults down. 
and hit the next button. I'm going to change my units to IPSs. I'm going to change my velocity to miles per hour. And click next. We're going to be doing an internal study and we'll exclude cavities without flow conditions. And we'll hit next. For our fluids, we're going to use a gas and we'll use air and we'll add it. We'll leave the rest as the default. These we can use as the default as well. And we can use this as the default as well. Okay, we'll finish that up and we are ready to proceed. All right, our first step is to close off our wind tunnel. I'm going to come to the tools here and say create lids. And I'm going to create a lid right here on this face and a lid over here on this face. Okay, it's going to ask me, do I wish to recompute the computing domain? And I'll say yes. And yes. Okay. Now I need to be able to see my model. So I'm going to just take this part and I'm going to hide it. Now I'll be able to see inside. I need the lids. That's where I'm going to put my boundary conditions on. And our tunnel is in place. We can see through it, so all is good. I'm going to come up here to goals to start off with. And I'm going to set some global goals. And I like to include, this is all the data. So we're going to include velocity. We're going to include turbulence. Um, turbulence intensity, do that across, and then f force, that way we could pull this over to an FEA study if we wanted, and since it's a wind turbine, I'm going to add torque in here. Okay, we'll click OK. What these will help us do is this will help us with the convergence of the meshing and the testing to make sure everything is in good shape. All right, now it's time to add the boundary conditions. So I'll click condition, boundary condition. We're going to pick the inside face of lid one. We want to make sure we note the coordinate system. My X is going this way. And we're going to do an inlet velocity, and we're going to set that to 20 miles per hour. And I want to make sure my reference axis is that X, and it is. Click OK. And then we need one more condition, boundary condition. We're going to pick the back lid. And... I'm going to switch to the second type, which is pressure opening. And I want to do environmental pressure on that. Clicking OK. All right. So I should have red arrows on this side, blue arrows going both ways on that side. Everything is done. We can go ahead and run our study now. This will take a few moments. Every time we make a change, we want to go ahead and make a new calculation for it. Anytime that we just want to uh, look at the results, we can continue the calculations if we're not getting to a convergence factor. This will take a few moments. We actually have a results box that pops up. Kind of tells us what's going on. shows us our convergence taking place, how many times we're running through the test. 
and you can see that it's achieving convergence somewhere in the 40 to 45 uh, test runs. Okay, and our solver is finished. Okay, so now we can start to look at our results. And we're going to run two results on here. My first result is going to be the flow. So I'm going to right click on that and insert. And in this, I'm going to pick my wind turbine, or my vertical wind turbine assembly. So that's given me all the faces that I want to run this across. I'm going to set this to 200. This is the number of lines we're going to have coming across it. And size 10. We'll try the defaults to begin with. Click OK. We may have to make some adjustments to some of the appearance settings, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to change the appearance to static and lines, line width to, and we're going to change from pressure to velocity, although we could leave it on pressure would be fine, and click OK, let it rerun. There we go. So now I have a color chart in miles per hour, and I can kind of start to see how the wind is interacting and changing speed as it interacts with my wind turbine. Now I can rotate my model and rerun this and see it in different configurations, seeing where I'm getting turbulence built up, where the airflow is slowing down, and circling back. I can change the number of lines. I could also just take a look, rather than picking the whole model, I could just pick this blade here or here and put 200 lines on that and get a little better look at that particular piece. So this is a work in progress to really study this and take a look at it. And we're really only looking at the basics today and get you started and on this road to taking a look at making a better design. Um, so here's our, our first step for doing that. We're going to do one other test today. So I'm going to hide this one. And it'll come right back if I just unhide it. And the second test we're going to do is going to be a surface plot. So I'm going to insert a surface plot. Same model as before. I'm going to use vectors for that. And I want it to be the velocity. And we'll use the defaults for the rest of it. And we'll click OK. So this gives me a velocity on how that's hitting those blades with a little line. If I don't like the lines, I can go ahead and edit that. Um, where's that at? Edit definition. And so we did vectors, velocity. We could do contours. This will give us some color. Cross it. 
And There we go. Now we can kind of see some lines as they go across the surfaces and what's actually happening there. Again, we can increase the number of lines, but that will increase the computing time. But it starts to give us an idea of what's going on here and where we can start to make some improvements. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video on a basic wind tunnel. Again, we could put any model in here, a car, an airplane, whatever we want to blow uh, some wind across and take a look at the results. And hopefully this gets you started. And uh, we'll take a more in-depth look at some of these settings and how we can improve our models in a future video. But I want to get something out quick here that you could start to do some basic testing and play around with. As always, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, if you have an idea for our next video, please leave it in the comments below. Enjoy, and good luck.